Welcome to Clipboard Conversations. John Fogey alongside Hornets assistant coach Jay Triano. And coming up on this episode, we're going to take a look back at the trip to Paris as well as a look ahead at a home game and then a couple of games coming up on the road. And coach, uh, we always start this kind of talking about some of the trends, but we're going to start it obviously on a, a somber note with mm -hmm. the passing of, of Kobe Bryant over the mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, you coached against him. You coached, uh, you coached him with the select team, I guess. Uh, horrific news. What were yeah. your your impressions and, and just kind of your thoughts on Kobe? I think initially the first thought was disbelief. You know, this was like, oh, this can't be real. And then when you start thinking about it and hearing more about it, you just go, how, how can this, you know, be happening? How can to one of the greats of the game? And I think it's a, you know, it's a message to us all that, you know, we're not invincible and uh, such a sad day, you know, you know, not 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 just in the basketball world, but mm -hmm. uh, but around the world. I mean, he touched so many people, and uh, when you start thinking about his family and the fact that a family member was with him. It just becomes almost like uh, basketball is uh, meaningless, really. Uh, but what a what a what a great competitor that he was, and uh, um, it's just really sad. How how will he be remembered by by you, or maybe by the basketball community as a whole? I think you know. In the 20 years that he played, he just created a, uh, uh, I guess he called it the Mamba mentality, where mm -hmm. you know I'm going to work harder than anybody else, I'm going to be better than everybody else, and I'm, I'm, you know, from a young age he was like, I'm, this is what's going to happen, and I'm going to follow this plan, and I'm going to do it, and if I step on you, that's okay, and if I, you know, but I'm. D driven to become the best and I, I, I you have to admire that uh, you know people that you know love the game so much and want to be great and uh, you know I got to see firsthand with the with the US team uh, you know his daily routine in the middle of the summer uh, was just definitely 100% committed Pilates so his core strength could be strong and then weightlifting to maintain the rigors of an NBA season and then he would go through the team practice and then at night he'd go back in two hours of shooting and I went back to watch and it was like it wasn't like catch the ball and shoot it was like one of the you know those those fade away jump in the air four feet uh, game winners that he did he practiced those and here's a guy in an empty gym uh, with a guy rebounding completely soaked for two hours uh, working on his game and at that point I just went this is what the best do and uh, followed his career and uh, because of that and um, was inspired. We think about the impact that he had and I think kind of what stood out to me in thinking about it was that impact is going to be felt for a long time because there's a whole generation of players that grew up idolizing him, working towards what he got to, and then how giving he was, giving back to the yeah. next generation with Absolutely. his Mamba Academy and, and really yeah. taking guys under his wing. Yeah, and not just the Mamba Academy. I remember coaching in Phoenix and uh, he pulled Booker aside in the middle of the game. Here's a guy he's trying to beat and he's pulling him aside, talking to him about something he should be doing and helping him, helping a competitor. Uh, but I think that's part of the legacy that he, he was so willing to help so many different uh, players and and people and uh, You know Players who benefited from that uh, I'm sure they're feeling a lot more sad and somber today than than those that, that just knew him as as uh, as a fan It's kind of tough, but we'll, we'll try to transition mm -hmm. to back to the Hornets and think back to the trip to Paris and, yeah. and kind of what that experience was like. How, how do you feel? I mean, obviously you want to pick up the win against Milwaukee, yeah. but uh, start to finish kind of connecting with European Hornets fans and getting to experience the city and yeah. putting together a game plan to take on the best team in the NBA. Yeah, and, 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 and to talk about the game a little bit first, I, I thought, I thought you know, for three quarters we're pretty darn good and mm -hmm. uh, we still, you know, with the game plan, I thought we did a pretty good job of containing Giannis a little bit and making other players take tough shots, challenging them later. Uh, we were able to score in transition. We were able to get the ball up and down the court and, and score. But uh, you know, I think their their talent in the end kind of wore us down and, uh, and and beat us. But you know, there's a lot of positives to take from that game. I think Malik had a really strong game, and his ability to snap, drive, and get in the paint was 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 real positive for us. Uh, but overall, a trip like that, uh, you know, I think you know, 10 years from now, you, you know, these guys on this team are going to go. Well, yeah, we went to Paris, but 
did we win? Like they won't remember the win or the mm -hmm. loss. And I think, you know, the bonding and the fact that these guys got to spend time together, and even us as coaches, uh, the more time that we spend together, the more we understand each other. And I think uh, overall, the mood of the team uh, was very, very positive uh, throughout the whole time there. And I think it's only going to add to our chemistry as we move forward. You talked about the execution in that game. I thought the attention to detail mm -hmm. in terms of executing that game plan yep. was was so high yep. uh, throughout those those three quarters and then you're right you know Giannis kind of took over there a little bit in the fourth quarter but mm -hmm. up to that point kept the turnovers down you yep. took advantage of their turnovers the three-point shot pushing in transition yep. all those things the attention to detail was really high yeah I thought I thought uh, technically and tactically we were you know and, and even even watching the tape uh, on the way home and when we got back here like the, we looked at some of the things and went, ah, it didn't matter what our coverage was, we weren't going to stop that. I mm -hmm. mean, it was a great switch on a high low, and they threw it, well, they threw it to where only one guy in the gym could get it. <laughs> yeah. And it was, you know, you pat them on the back, it was a good, it was a good play on their part. And, and then Middleton got, you know, he got going a little bit too, and we had pr done a pretty good job of keeping him under wraps, and I think Corbett was probably the guy that broke open the floodgates, but we had done a pretty good job to that point in not letting their guys get open looks, making sure that every shot was a tough shot, and as soon as they started seeing a couple go in, uh, we knew we were, in, we were in for a tough game. Malik Monk with a career and season high, 31 points in that mm -hmm. ball game. In his last two games, he's totaled 51 points. And yeah. what really stood out to me in looking back on that was 31 of those points came in the paint over mm -hmm. those two games. Right. When he's in attack mode, he's a dangerous player. Absolutely. And, you know, and we're trying to get, you know, figure out how to collapse defenses to be able to shoot the three. And if you can have a guy like Malik, and I think Dwayne Bacon does it at times for mm -hmm. us as well, uh, those are guys that can uh, create on their own. They can, I, I, I can get past my guy, make somebody else help. If they don't help, we expect you to score one-on-one. -on -one. If they do, we expect you to kick and find a teammate. And I, I thought Malik did a really good job of being able to just get in the paint. And, uh, you know, this Milwaukee's a team where they sit back and then try to take away the rim. Uh, so his little mid-range floater, you know, four foot, five foot shot uh, flying through the air was going in and uh, that's a benefit for us. And if they would have brought somebody else, then, you know, Malik's a, as good as he is at scoring, he's a capable passer as well. So it was great to see him have that game and we're, you know, we keep promoting the fact that we're trying to, you know, snap drive and get in the paint and come off screens and see if we can make, make two guys guard you and uh, Malik's been real good. Yeah, he had the 31 points, five rebounds, five assists. He had a block and a steal too. And mm -hmm. how about that block? I mean, I, Neymar is jumping off on the yeah. <laughs> on the side that block was impressive yeah he's a he's he's a better athlete than you think and you know I remember t I, I even said to him before the game because you know you know this whole event was it was was different than the normal NBA we mm -hmm. play 82 games but when one of them is in Paris France it's pretty cool and when to walk into the arena uh, it, it had a great vibe and, and I said I said are you are you a little bit more fired up for this one he goes oh heck yeah <laughs> and I think all our players were I mm -hmm. think you know um, the environment and the build up to the game kind of created that and uh, it was a it was a it was a fun event to be part of. All right, we'll kind of put the wraps on Paris, and if if you could say the team will take one thing away from the the whole Paris experience, maybe what would that be? No, well, just togetherness. I mean, sharing something that uh, no one will be able to take away from us. I mean, the, you know, it, it, for me, it's a, it, it's a little bit like the international game when you go away and you're with a team, and you know, all your meals are together, you're on the bus together all the time. Nobody goes home. Uh, you, you know, you spend your time with your teammates. And and I think that helps the, the bond of friendship and the bond of teammates. And uh, I think those are imperative to be real positive if you're going to be a good team. All right, the Hornets are back stateside. They've got a home game coming up against the New York Knicks and then two more on the road. We'll take a look at those games coming up next right here on Clipboard Conversations. Taking a look ahead here as we continue with clipboard conversations, Hornets assistant coach Jay Triano. Uh, you've got the Knicks at home and then out on the road, Washington and San Antonio. Yep. Everybody through the jet lag. Everybody look okay this week? Well, it's tough. I mean, uh, we're all de we're all dealing with it, and I think. You know, with the, with the tragedy and the jet lag, you know, you've got you've got tons of excuses, and I think the best thing, you know, is to get out there and play sometimes. And uh, you know, good practice uh, today, and, and 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 we'll be ready for the Knicks. Uh, um, it's fun to get back home, and it's fun to play a game. I mean, mm -hmm. I think practice has become monotonous at this point of the season. And uh, you know, the Knicks are a team that uh, they're physical. They're they're big, and they're physical, and they're and and they're scary because they're starting to win a bunch of games. And you know. 
it, it, it's going to be good for us. It's going to be good for us to just get back and play at home. And then we look ahead to that road trip, and yeah. you've got Washington. You've seen them twice mm -hmm. already. Split with them. Davis Berton seems to be as yeah. much as you want to talk about Bradley Beal. Davis Berton has kind of been the story for he, Washington. He's a, he's a tough. He's such a tough guard. He is. Uh, he's a. He's got, he plays like a guard, but he's 6'10", so you got to be even closer to get up if you're going to challenge a shot, and he's been really shooting the ball well. So uh, he, he's the guy that you have to guard. But again, you're right, if you don't pay attention to Bradley uh, Beal, he's going he's to cause problems for you as well. So those two guys will be part of our, our focus there, and uh, you know it's going to be... It's going to be a little bit different getting back out on the road again, and where it's just in North America, and not <laughs> not long flights, but uh, you know that, and then you know the homecoming a little bit for JB and going back, and and Dutch and a bunch of our, our players going back to, to San Antonio, where you know, we played real well last year, and uh, you know it's a team that you know. We, we, you know, we have to compete against. We have to, we have to compete against these teams. Uh, uh, obviously, New York and Washington, and you know, regardless of what our record is, we still look at the standings. We still look at who we have to climb over and who we have to beat to, to get into a spot where uh, we keep, uh, we keep everybody interested. And uh, those two are important for us. One at home, one away, and then we, when, then we go and play a tough team on the road. And finally, as we wrap up here, we think about you know, the current losing streak. How do you, how do you bust out of that? What's the? Because I've been around a lot of teams that have gone on extended losing mm -hmm. streaks. And the vibe around this team doesn't feel like a team that's yeah. that's dropped eight in a row. No, I think I, I think you know you have to remain positive. I, you know we always talk about the the process over the outcome, and the outcome is the losses. But you know the process of what we're going through, the development mm -hmm. of our players, and different guys stepping up and playing well, uh, kind of helps us. You know we want to see guys like Malik step up and have a game, and we want to see growth from PJ, and we want to see growth from Miles. And uh, I think when we see that and have our vets step in every once and again to help us over the hump, then then that's positive. And I think, you know, we just focus on playing the right way and doing what we're trying to do and keep making these guys better. And it was great to see one of those vets step up in Paris, Marvin yeah. Williams yeah, with 18 Marv was great. off the bench. Head coach, or excuse me, assistant coach Jay yeah. Triano joining us here on this episode of Clipboard Conversations. Coach, thanks so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. We'll talk to you next week right here on Hornets.com.